The cold air coming out of the AC may still be a mystery to some of us. We know that the air coming out of the AC comes from the room air itself. But why can the temperature be so cold? Where does the cold temperature come from? In this video, we will discuss how the mechanism of cold temperature formation in air conditioners or AC. If we disassemble the AC unit, the air circulation in it is more or less like this. The AC only circulates the air in the room through a component called the evaporator. The evaporator consists of two parts, namely pipes and heat sinks. Inside this evaporator pipe, there is a special liquid called refrigerant or freon. Freon is a liquid that has a very low boiling point, allowing freon to absorb heat from the room air, which is actually not very hot. When air flows through the gaps in the evaporator, the heat is absorbed by the freon, and the air coming out of the AC vents becomes very cold. However, after the freon absorbs heat, its temperature increases and turns into gas. When the temperature of the freon approaches room temperature, it is no longer able to absorb heat because its temperature is balanced. In order for the freon to reabsorb heat, the temperature of the freon needs to be lowered, and its form must be returned to liquid form. How to do it? Outside the room, there is another AC unit called the outdoor unit, which is tasked with removing heat from the freon so that the freon can be recirculated to cool the air in the room. This air conditioning system consists of two main component groups. The indoor unit, which functions to lower the room air temperature, and the outdoor unit, which is tasked with conditioning the freon as before. These two units are connected through two channels for the flow of freon in and out. Returning to the process in the evaporator, after absorbing heat, the temperature of the freon rises and the freon turns into gas. In this condition, the freon flows to the outdoor unit and enters a part called the compressor. In the compressor, the pressure of the freon is increased. After passing through the compressor, the freon has high pressure, but is still in the form of gas and heat. Then, the freon is flowed to the condenser, where the freon is cooled and condensed back into liquid. In the condenser, the freon is divided into small channels, and the condenser fan turns on to suck air from the back of the unit, through the condenser and out the front. This air helps lower the temperature of the freon, which then changes back into a liquid from the condenser. This high-pressure liquid freon is returned to the indoor unit, to the expansion valve. Here, the pressure of the freon is drastically reduced, causing the temperature of the freon to also drop drastically. After passing through the expansion valve, the freon re-enters the evaporator. When the blower rotates, indoor air enters through the top of the AC, passes through the evaporator, and exits through the AC vent as cold air. What about the temperature settings? The AC temperature settings, blower speed, and other modes are controlled by the PCB located next to the evaporator. This PCB is connected to the condenser fan and compressor. If we set the AC temperature to the lowest level, the compressor and fan will rotate at maximum speed to produce optimal cooling. So, the AC system is actually just a heat transfer process. Heat from indoors is transferred to the outdoors without changing the air in the room. Because the heat is released, the temperature of the air in the room becomes lower, creating a cooling effect. That's how the air conditioning system works. Hopefully this explanation can increase our insight.